Okay, so I had been training at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista for about a year and a half at that point. I was one of the original athletes that was contracted there uh, to train full time, to play on the World Seven Series and then and hopefully train for the Olympics. Um, and that week was uh, World Cup selections were coming out for the World Cup in Russia. So a lot of us were, were really on edge. Um, I had just the turn, like for as long as I was there, I was like uh, one of the primary players, at, particularly at scrum half. Um, and I'd been used to starting most of the games and then just the tournament prior to that was the first tournament that I like was was not playing a lot of minutes. So, you know, I had started to kind of lose my confidence around being selected necessarily. Um, but he told me, <laughs> he had had, we had had conversations about it. And so, you know, and even talked about the future, like years down the road, um, you know, what he was seeing, the coach at the time, um, what I could work on and thought it was doable. Um, but somewhere in the interim, he had a change of heart and he decided to give somebody else uh, the, my contract. Um, so when I went in uh, for that individual meeting when he was sharing the uh, World Cup selections, he actually told me that not only was I not going to World Cup, but that he was, was releasing me from my contract. Um, yeah, so I like, essentially at the time I felt just like the, like the floor had just completely fallen out from underneath me because like all of us there, you know, I, I had really, of course, um, wanted to go to the Olympics and I was part of this generation where when we started playing rugby, that wasn't a possibility and it had become a possibility, you know, like we kind of fell in love with this sport. And then the sport became an Olympic sport. So it was really cool. It was like, we were kind of like this generation of players that were playing the sport simply because we really loved it. Um, but now we also had this really cool opportunity to go play for the Olympics. Um, yeah, and to be cut like that from such an extreme environment with like so little notice to really not see it coming. Like, I don't really know how to describe it except like you feel it like a very, very like profound loss, I think. Like I just remember for weeks and weeks and weeks waking up and thinking at like, like re reliving it all over again. But yeah, it was really hard because it's very much, um, if, you, if you don't, if you don't like throughout the whole process kind of have a very, careful mindset around what you're doing, you can, you can experience this very serious like loss of self. And I definitely lived through that. Um, yeah, and for better or worse, I went over to Australia. Um, I was with my sister, who I love dearly, but isn't the most empathetic person in the world. Um, but I wasn't really with anyone that, that also understood what I was, was going through. Looking back now, I kind of look at my young self then, and like I was still playing, um, but in my heart of hearts, I felt like that was it, I had failed. Like, like I had had my shot, didn't make it, and that that, that wouldn't come around again. But yeah, that was probably though the beginning of kind of seeing rugby in a different way and and while I was over there different opportunities in rugby were, were starting to open up um, including coaching. I was getting homesick and my good friend Mel um, was coaching at AIC down the road from here um, and I was just talking to her and you know um, she basically convinced me to come home um, and help her with that team, but kind of was making the point to me like, hey, like there's all these other opportunities actually opening up and we actually can make a career of this now. Um, so I 
yeah, I, I took that chance to come back, live with my buddy. We were coaching at that school. Um, and then coaching kind of took off from there. And I was coaching there, but I hadn't even been there for a year when this opportunity at, Dar at Dartmouth opened up. And so it just seemed like the perfect opportunity for me, somebody who went to an Ivy League school, so kind of understands what that experience is like, but also somebody who had been fortunate enough to have all the rugby experiences that I did and the, you know, then short coaching resume, but like one of the few female coaches that had any sort of resume at all at that time, um, to kind of go back to an Ivy school with such cool, like rugby history um, and resources. So. The, the interesting thing about that, I think, was that that was when essentially I made the decision to, to really commit to coaching at that point. Because coaching, you definitely, like, um, you don't necessarily get to choose what city you're gonna live in or anything if you're really passionate about coaching because if, when opportunities to coach open up, you kind of have to be willing to, to go to that place and build something there. So, so that was the point where I think and I wasn't even old now. I felt old at the time, but I wasn't even old then. I think, oh my God, I was 27. Yeah, so even at that point, I could have probably, I could have kept playing and done some, gone, done some stuff, but coaching just took off and it was fun. If I, if I had made it and not felt that sense of loss, if I actually would have ever recognized that I hadn't actually figured it out yet. And then if I hadn't had the time to, to, to do that, I don't know how good of a coach I would be. If I had made it without having to think through all the stuff that I've processed now, yeah, I, I wouldn't be as good of a coach. I think. I think coaching has helped me understand that I didn't lose my identity. Like, I think in particular, like be, having the chance to be like a, a professional athlete is a very intoxicating experience. And I think it feels, gosh, yeah, I'm just trying to like come up with the right words for that feeling because I never felt a loss of like, um, like my relationship to like rugby and my people and, and, and stuff like that. But, but I definitely felt like, maybe it was just that the purpose, like I had let that become my only purpose around playing. So in that sense, yeah, probably discovering coaching gave me a, like a new, like great and sense of purpose and now that I've been coaching for a long time I think it's given me perspective on what's important in life and um, kind of helps me it's certainly helped me process that that earlier phase of my life I've realized that the really cool thing about coaching is that you don't have to have all the answers you just have to leave space for people to kind of discover answers together. And the things that I've seen happen within this team over the past few years, you know, have like, I, I, there, there have been moments where I'm like, wow, I can't believe that, like, that we've actually come this far as people are and are having such a powerful moment. So, you know, it's funny because like eight years ago, I was thinking like, oh, I've got to mem memorize these one-liners of life wisdom to impart, but that's really not it at all. Like, I hope that, I think now that, like, kind of knowing how to um, give players, students, the space to lead themselves and figure out how to work together as a group of people, how to build cultures, that's, like, the real powerful stuff of what we're doing. Um, and that that me actually not telling anyone how to do that is when it actually works the best. <laughs> is failure an opportunity to begin? 
again? Yeah. No, you'll never be the same. But you'll you'll learn, you'll realize a whole lot of stuff you didn't even know you didn't know. And I think that's what, from my playing experience and looking back, I've just realized so much about what I didn't yet know about life as a person um, and things like that. And I think you know, if I had, like I said, made it, you know, I wouldn't have had to reflect and think about those things. So, you know, it's probably life would have found another way to knock me on my button, figure those things out. Um, so maybe it would have come in one way or shape or form or another, but, but, uh, but yeah. So it's not beginning again because you're different, but it certainly teaches you a lot. I'm Katie Dowdy. I am the head coach of Dartmouth Women's Rugby. I've been here since 2015, um, and we've won three national championships and six Ivy championships. Um, and I was a USA Eagle.